wanted to show everybody the progress this morning so far we are starting to install this bad boy so if you remember the, there's a hole underneath underneath there. that's what it's half set in right now um, you have to leave enough room up front to use some of the some of this stuff because it's the only thing that'll that'll fit over the end of the uh, of the heater and into the vent um, and I might be stuck using that vent too so this is where I decided to put the tank what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna route a I'll route a, a, a bit of line down there it'll come out underneath and it'll go to the to the heater that's right over there so the last the, the next thing that I need to do is cut a hole for this this is actually gonna help block the wood from the exhaust because you know that exhaust is really really warm um, if you're in the if you're in the UK or overseas you can get these uh, turret plates so this thing would be with like a five inch hole uh, underneath it which would have been perfect but they cost a lot to get here in the states and I don't know when it would have gotten here so instead you uh, you get this it's like seven bucks on Amazon I'll link it um, you install it first the only problem is it's an it's a weird hole uh, but I'll show you how I I'll show you how I decided to to figure that out I built this template and I just did that by you know, setting the the metal piece onto you know onto it and then making sure that it fit I use this template to draw my my hole now the black goo stuff that that needs to be flat in order for it to have a good seal so the other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my exacto knife and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get this upper this upper stuff out of here uh, unless it's glued down on the wood but at least it'll be pre-cut and that'll help with the uh, with the sawing so I'll get that done I'll see if I can peel that off of there and then we'll uh, then I'll work on getting the hole cut using the hobby knife we got that right there next up we use a skill saw um, I do have to worry about the underneath stuff it's like a it's like a foam insulation like a, like a plastic insulation I'm hoping that uh, I'm hoping that the blade will just cut it for me if not I'll have to clean it up underneath and I may have to uh, I may have to make sure and add enough of the uh, enough, enough of the RV sealant to uh, to keep it from flapping around down there but that's fine just RV seal it to the uh, to the heat shroud so I'll let you see how the uh, cut goes well it's not the prettiest thing in the world but the skill saw got the job done and it sits in there I can put screws in all the holes which is important we're gonna do that uh, and then the heater should sit in there no problem the best part is um, it for the most part don't have any real big gaps to fill uh, as, as far as uh, as far as for caulking there's a little bit of a gap the size of my thumb on on this front part right right here but I can fill that with the caulk and that will uh, that will enable me to actually put caulk right up as you can see right up around the edge of this thing is gonna have caulk built all the way around it and that's gonna seal that really nicely um, there won't be any problems with water intrusion getting in here uh, getting to that wood uh, and and that's what you want you know like that's the goal so got a little cleanup that I'll have to do I've got more holes to cut so I'm not gonna worry about that too much next up what we need to do is uh, we need to get this screw bolted down uh, and then we need to figure out where the hole is going to go. It's a three inch hole. So I want to line that up as, as straight dead on as I possibly can. Uh, and we'll figure out how I'm going to do that. Okay. There it is all screwed in. Uh, I was going to do all six screws, but it's good. And with, with how nicely it fits there with just such little overlap, um, Nothing's really going to be grabbing onto it or anything like that. Uh, it's not going to go anywhere. That's the important thing. So I think two is going to be just fine. 
The other plate sits on it completely uh, and hides it, so you don't, you won't even you won't even see this much of it. But it's a nice. Uh, it's <laughs> it worked really really well. So I'll have a link to it in the uh, in the description of the video. Next up, I'm gonna sort of temp mount the uh, the heater and figure out where to drill my vent hole. So that's next. I also have another vent hole that I need to drill. Once I figure out where this one is going to be, I'm going to measure the exact same spot down there and drill a return hole. So that way, even though I can get cold air from here, I can stop this up and get uh, and get just air coming from the cabin uh, back through the heater back to the back to the cabin. We'll obviously have a we we will obviously have to have a vent open. Probably I'll just have the max fan vent open. Uh, it, the the max fan vent is now under is now under the solar panel. So it's you know it'll let fresh air in. It'll let a little air out. But if it ever is actually snowing, and I hope I hope to one day be able to say it's it's snowing and show you videos. Having that air coming right out to the solar panel may actually help keep the snow from gathering on the solar panel should be good so all right we're going to continue with this um i'm sort of running out of things to do before i have to go get grommets and stuff to be able to drill holes uh through because i so I'll, I'll need to have a hole drilled for the pump for the pump power uh and i'll need to grommet that and that's actually going to be a pretty significant grommet if you think about it because it's a pretty pretty thick wood that that is that is in here so i need to i need to make sure that i'm that i'm good there um and then i also need to get a, a smaller grommet a much easier to obtain grommet for the fuel line going through the going through the uh, box the, the plastic box up front so those are two things i know i need i talked about and will get a better a better fuel filter so gotta go grab that stuff eventually but i want to get everything done here that I can first before I start taking off in case I need another part. So that's where we're at. All right, we'll keep going. And there's the hole going into the trailer. I put the vent that came with the system in there uh, for now. I used a hole saw, figured out where the center of it was, and then I put the I put the heater in to figure out where I wanted to put it. I put the heater in where I where I wanted it to be, mocked it up, and then I have this little piece of that stuff that I cut. Uh, that I would, if I was going to keep that, that vent hole in there, I would just fit it right, right like that, and then I would put the heater there. And I, and I probably will to make sure that everything is kosher, although kind of sold on it now. Uh, and it looks pretty close to where I was drawing it, and, and the, you know, the flexibility is there to make it, so that way that's not going to be too big of a problem. Um, but now I definitely need to clean up. Got to get the uh, shop back out here. There's lots of uh, lots of wood. What I want to do is I want to measure this hole, how far it is away from this side, and how far up it is, and then I'm going to make another one on that side for my return vent. So that way I've got uh, that way there's symmetry inside of the trailer, uh, as well as the ability to bring warm air into this compartment. Now, for the fridge's sake, you typically wouldn't want to bring warm air into this compartment you know the cooler air the, the cooler the air that you can get the better and since i tend to do more winter cool weather camping than i do warm weather camping uh you would it kind of defeats the purpose uh however i'm willing to do the extra for the fridge the extra uh the little bit of extra that, that's needed to keep the fridge cool to make sure that my battery stays warm because the uh the cold will have a negative effect on the battery much more than a little bit of warm air uh will have on the uh on on the actual unit itself because it's not going to be a lot of warm air that's coming back through here it'll be a lot more if i block this up but that's only ever going to be on the coldest in the coldest situations most of the time I'm going to want that open, giving fresh air to the uh, to the heater and maximizing the amount of ventilation that I have within the trailer. So we'll keep going. I'll show you what this looks like once I put the uh, heater back in and uh, you'll get an idea. But really at this point, um, I'm, I'm very close to having to go and get those grommets so I can actually install fuel line and, and get it going. Real fast. 
that is that is perfect to, to be honest I'm not even sure it comes with hose clamps but once I have this in this thing is this thing is so tight that I don't think I'm even gonna bother with holes with hole clamps I think that it's just gonna it's just gonna ride I mean, it's not going anywhere um, at all I'm not even I'm not even lined up it, it, it needs to be pushed just a little bit uh, let's see so right about there um, it's not it's not going anywhere that's that's a very tight uh, connection I might do a hole I might do a I might do clamps around it just to make sure the air doesn't start trying to come out from around this although because I'm trying to heat this area for the battery as well kind of don't care so hmm something to think about maybe I'll try it without it I don't know probably I'll put the clamps on there I have them if you have it you might as well use it we get something a little bit difficult I want to show you what it is this is the uh, this is the connection for the uh, fuel pump obviously I don't want to cut a hole this big when when this is all that's going to go through it is this little guy right here. Uh, I will need to cut a hole bigger because I do need to make a, I do need to make some sort of a grommet. You don't want to have this this cable against the wood, but you got to get it out of here first. And this was pretty hard, so I took a bobby pin, I snipped the little plastic uh, dipped end caps off of it. And how this works is, you want to take, you want to find find the clamp. You see the, the you see the, the flat metal in there? I'm going to go front to back on this. I'm going to stick this in on both sides on the outside of the metal. It's got to be in there at the same time. And it comes right out. Okay, so got to have both got to have both those pieces in there to get See the, the see these barbs right here? These barbs you can kinda kinda see them right there sticking out on each side. I'm actually gonna flex those out with my with my thumbnail. Because when I go to see if it wants to there we go. Yep, did it for a second. There it is. Okay. So, because when you stick it back in there, you want those things to grab on pretty good. You know, this is, you don't want it to uh, pull them out once, put them back in once. So, but I'm not going to drill the hole for this yet. Uh, I just needed to make sure that I could do it because now I know that I can go and get the smallest possible grommet situation that I can. Um, I'm going to need, I, I may even put it through. I may even put a grommet into a piece of, of tube because of how thick that wood is, but we'll see. So that's how you get that. Last night, I got tired, and I wrapped up a few things, and just, it was dark, so I went in after getting parts. Uh, but here's what we've done. So this is the, the start of a shelf. All right, the wood has been cut to uh, accommodate the things on, on that side that need to accommodate. The power has been put in. I ended up using one of my special little built-in soldering iron or soldering things um, to connect it to the ground that came off the battery. It's 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 the ground, so it's not uh, it's not a bad deal to have it uh, grounded out any to that anyway. And then I have that. It goes to the controller. You can see the hole up there that I made because I couldn't disconnect it. This hole down here. That's for the uh, that's for the uh, fuel fuel pump. I'll show you where we're at with that too in a second. And then up there, you'll see a fancy little connection. See that guy right there? That is a four plug quick connect, and you just you plug them in. It's uh, they're they're kind of like a newer version of those uh, little peanuts that you twist everything together, and they work a little bit better and a little easier. So let's go up front. We cleaned to the trailer as well. Uh, let's go up front and I'll show you how the gas tank install went. Okay, so there's there's the, the, the diesel, I'm sorry. I got a bigger filter. We'll, we'll see if it works. I retained the old filter just in case. Looks like it got a little wet in here when I cleaned it, so that's fine. That's uh, something to note. Looks like it probably comes in through the back, so we have to make sure whatever we put in here is is okay. There's the lines going down. 
So that's the fuel line, and then that's the uh, that's the the pump that's up there. Now, a lot of people tell you not to mount them hard like this. Like you'll see, I've got it hard mounted up there. If if it wasn't in this box, completely separated from the cab, probably not. But unless this box becomes a very loud ticking drum, which I really hope it doesn't, I'm not too concerned. So we'll step around here. And inside, there you see I've mounted the controller. Now this controller was pretty easy to mount. Um, hey, how are you? Good. I just went. Uh, I think we have. I think we have visitors. So there's the hole underneath, and then I just put two screws in. I had to find pretty small screws, size four, for the flathead, not pan, flat. Uh, that's what you want and then um, There's the hole for that. And I, I drilled another hole For a return so that's just open and going back into the uh, Into the backspace to help air cycle through into the heater. So that's where we're at uh, We will uh, my wife talked me into going with a, another part that will allow us to use the same vent on each side I'll show you that when it comes Thought I'd uh, show you what I ended up doing with the uh, RTV sealant. So, not a big deal. Just make sure you cover everything really thoroughly. No such thing as winning a beauty contest with this stuff. Uh, it's definitely about keeping water out of your uh, of your systems. So I'm still gonna put uh, a bit underneath this. The uh, the heater's not installed yet. This was just a mock up. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna put a little bit of this stuff of the RTV sealant underneath the uh, heater uh, to make sure that water can't get up into and around the heater into the trailer. So got to keep the water out. All right, still waiting on the last part before I can permanently install this bad boy. Hopefully it comes soon. The last part is here. That is a Spectra air coupler thing I don't really know my wife found it and what it does for us is it makes it possible to use a different vent on the front I'm going to take you around to the front of the trailer to the inside of the cab to show you the kind of vent that we can now use <clears throat> so we are now able to use a flat vent because that just that just sits in there it just it's, it doesn't go all the way through like the one that came with the system is it just sits in the uh, in the opening um, you know kind of kind of snugly this one is pointed down to pick up cold air and return it into the inner compartment there and that one is faced up to blow warm air up onto us while we're uh, while we're in here so it's here we're getting it done so the Heater is in. We got the exhaust right here. This is, by the way, the, the jacket, the heat uh, wrap is what was smoking, so that's not a big deal. Just uh, smoking off the newness. The the fuel line is in. Has been primed, and the uh, and the air hose is in. Now to prime the fuel line, what we had to do was we had to attach a hose through the the filter, but not through the pump, and then basically allow that hose to fill up. And then blow that diesel back in through the uh, the filter in order to get air out of the filter and fill the filter up with diesel. So that's how I ended up doing that. Probably not the safest thing in the world, but still alive. So that's in. How I did my air hose. Now, these don't come with a filter, and I find that to be very strange. What I did is I got I got one of those you know wet boxes, 32 millimeter hole on this side to allow the hose to go in. Got some clamps here, and I found that air filter at an auto zone. Uh, it's just a spectrum air filter. Not a big deal. You see the holes on the top? That's to let air get in. There's a hole down here that can allow water to get out. If water does get in here, I really hope it doesn't, but just in case. this All this is trying to do, I mean, obviously we're not going to use this while we're going down the road, but what this is trying to do is keep this from being... Uh, keep this from 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 getting wet and stuff like that just from road debris and road crap as we go down the road and I really think that's going to be the case there's there's a bar there that's blocking spray from coming up 
and just getting straight into this thing. Those holes are really small except for the back ones. I actually repurposed this box from a different application. So hopefully, you know, we keep it nice and keep that filter uh, a little bit longer than we otherwise would. Um, we've got the exhaust mounted. So that's mounted like that. Uh, I did notice that this right here was getting a little bit warm. Now, I can't push up on that. The board is just right up against it or else I would, have, I would slide a, a bit of metal there. I may still mount something and then screw it up into the floor. Um, some metal just right here, but really right above it was nice and cool. And this is on a 68 degree day, so you have to imagine like, when you actually are running this thing when you need it, that might not be, that may be far enough away that it's not, it's not gonna matter. Um, but we'll check it, we'll continue to check it. So I still need to put a mount right there. I need to put a mount in, I got that. And then uh, other than that, we are really close to done. I'll, uh, let me show you the uh, let me show you what it looks like inside the uh, inside the cabin. The total package. Down there, you've got the heater running straight in to the uh, to the the actual sleeping cabin inlet. Notice that's the tube from the uh, that was for the vat for the battery vent that is supplying cold air directly to the intake of the of the heater which is really nice right like like nice fresh air is coming in straight to the heater um and then going into the cab we still are going to vent the cab not not going to take that chance i took these cables out of the way i've got a screw to keep them from bumping up against the heater again not running it while we're moving so still um and i i've, I've checked it it ran a little hot when i first started it up um i've I've learned that the LCD screens, the settings, tend to be for sort of a generic five, you know, five or three um, kilowatt heater, and this is just a two, so you got to kind of knock it down a little bit. But but go to the Facebook uh, diesel heater website. You can ask those guys if you can't find it, but I recommend searching first because everything everything you need is is on there, and and they helped me out. They actually answered a question already that I had. Uh, big thanks to those uh, to those people. Um, and then above it, strapped into this uh, this shelf that, that we that we built in, above it is the energy is the apex energy. Um, this bad boy or the energy apex. This bad boy is ready to go, just like this. And I'll probably leave it strapped in here as it sits the entire time. The uh, the light is on. She's getting solar panel so, solar power. I cannot imagine that it's a lot. I can't imagine that it's a lot. So yeah, right right there. There's no gain. We're not charging at all. Um, and that's just because it's cloudy. Cloudy in California. It's kind of cold too. It's nice. It's very, very nice. So solar panels are again just plugged in like that. I'll roll down the road like that. I don't have a problem with that. Pretty sure we're going to be okay. So we're wrapping this up. It's getting close. That strap just goes underneath there like that. The, the fridge is not closed, but it can. Not a big deal. Um, there's plenty of room for it to, to shut all the way. And, uh, yeah. So we are, uh, we're on our way. Wanted to let you guys know about something I ran into when it came to the install of this. So near as I can tell, these are the uh, these are the hangers that you're supposed to utilize when you're hanging up your uh, exhaust as well as your air intake hose. Um, it would it would have worked on the air intake hose because you can you can kind of squish the air intake hose really really well. Uh, it's it's pretty flimsy aluminum. But for your exhaust, I'm not sure. It definitely wouldn't fit over my uh, over my cover, the wrap, the the fire retardant material that I put over it. But um, I'm I'm skeptical it would have fit even if it was uh, even if it was just the bare metal. Uh, either way, how I fixed it was I got this uh, galvanized hanger strap. Um, it just you know you just bend it to what you need. You know, cut it, you wrap it around, and and then uh, and then cut it off. And that's what I used to uh, to hang the. Uh, exhaust the the air I didn't need a, a hanger anyway but that's how you do it so all right no more bouncing around got that attached really well we're good to go there it'll probably smoke a little bit when it starts up that's all right it's burning some stuff off still plenty of room for this to come up this part slides up there so no big deal there it doesn't pinch anything and the exhaust is firmly mounted so we're good down here. We're good up there. Last thing to do, test it and see how she works. You have to be kind of careful with these heaters, what kind of vents you use. So this is a brand new vent. Picked it up off of uh, picked it up off of uh, Amazon. It's it's thin plastic. Um, you know, it's not very robust. 
I tried using one before I had adjusted my settings too, too thoroughly, uh, and as you can see, it melted. It melted pretty, uh, pretty easily, um, because this, you know, the heater, the heater doesn't get that hot. But the end result is, is that uh, you have to adjust your settings correctly on these heaters, or else you, uh, you can run into that. So looks fine on the outside um, for the most part, but I'll tell you, this one's going to get thrown away. It's no good. It won't even stay in the hole anymore. It's basically collapsed inwards. Um, pretty interesting. So long term, I'm probably going to swap to a metal. Even even these, you know, I'll, eventually I'll run out of these. I'll end up having just like one more. And there's one in it right now that already kind of melt, melted a little bit too. And that's after I adjusted the settings. So we'll see how long they last. Um, and then the... Uh, and then I'll, I'll end up ordering some metal ones that should last a lot longer. The heater likes to turn on hot, and then it cools itself down once it reaches its desired working temperature. So that, that kind of has something to do with it as well. So, all right. So we're in the trailer. We're ready to start it up. I've got the uh, remote paired. There's plenty of videos on how to pair it. Um, but hopefully... It will turn on. We will see though. And the idea is to turn it on this way. There we go. Got to hold down the on button a little bit. She's turning on. Now I've gone in and I've edited these settings a little bit and I'm going to go back in and I'm going to edit the settings a little bit more because the guys on the uh, Facebook page have helped, have helped me get to the right settings. I just want to let it get running first. You'll see the little pump icon kick in when it's starting to, to feed. You won't hear the pump because the pump is all the way in that front box. And unless you get outside, you won't hear it. Sometimes it takes a little longer than others. There we go. Oh, you can kind of hear it just a little bit. Sounds like a faint thump sound from, from up here. No, I have nothing in the box. So that may also be making it easier for it to... Uh, making it easier for it to uh, reverberate in the box. So what I'm going to do here though is I'm going to set some settings up while it goes through its... Now going to the lock icon lets you put numbers in. I'll let, I'll let you know my code because it's the stock code which is 9009 And I'll tell you what we're doing on each one. Okay, so this is your minimum setting. And what the guy said is he runs his at 0 .0, or 0.8, which is fine with me. Now, that's your high setting. 3.5 for me, I, I, I'm thinking about even knocking it down to 3.4. Just because there's no reason to ever have it that high unless I'm, unless I'm doing some maintenance. And then i got to watch it all the time. Minimum, minimum fan speed. So... He runs his at like 16.5. I'm going to run mine at 17 as my minimum fan speed, and we're going to see what happens here. And then maximum fan speed is 5,000. Always have maximum 5,000 because that's, what, that's, that, that's as high as you're allowing the fan to run. I want the fan to run as high as it can, 5,000. Click OK a couple times. U12 is like... Is it running on a 12 volt? I think it can run on a 24 volt. I am not going to change that setting. 
um, but it, I don't know about that, I don't know what this is, and I don't know what PF5 is, so, back to normal, okay, the time is off, by the way, um, it's actually only 3.48 here, um, so now it's, now it's running, you can hear the fan speed as this thing gets up to temp, I'm already starting to get some warm air, it's, it's really doing quite well for me right now. You can see the the air right there. You can see how like how warm the system anticipates that it is. And then right here, the, the airs are a little bit backwards from what you would think, but right here. So now I've kicked it down to its lowest setting, right? I said, hey, this is all I want to this is all I want. And by the way, can no longer hear the uh, pump. At all. Of course you can hear the fan quite a bit, which is fine, uh, because that fan is gonna keep things nice and it's going to keep things nice and uh, and cool on the case and on the uh, on the air that's coming out. I would I would like I would prefer lukewarm air to come out of this system, uh, just because I don't I don't want to melt things. I don't want to you know I don't want to overheat the case. So, but that's it. I'm those are the settings I'm messing with to get to the desired temperatures that I want. Um, it's it's 63 degrees outside, so chances are great that I will. I am not capable of getting this thing to be as cold as I want to. As you can see, it's still still very much warming up, um, and and there's some pretty hot air coming out of it at this point. So hopefully, it doesn't get any warmer than this uh, and starts to slow everything down, including how much the pump is pumping in and how fast the uh, how fast the engine's running. Because I don't I don't need it any warmer than this right here to be comfortable. It's a very small trailer. So that's it. That's the heater install. It is in. It works. Very happy with it. And uh, now just playing around with the settings. Thanks for watching. This has been Dusty Trail.